This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at types of bonding and electrical conductivity. For a substance to conduct electricity, it must have one of the following. Either delocalized electrons, which are electrons that are free to move within the structure, or free moving or mobile ions, which are ions that are free to move in a solution or in a liquid. In this video, I'll cover the electrical conductivity of substances that have three types of bonding. The first is covalent bonding that exists between the atoms in a molecule or in a giant covalent structure. The second is ionic bonding that exists between the ions in an ionic compound. And the third is metallic bonding that exists in metals. So we'll start with substances that have covalent bonds. So molecular elements and compounds are poor conductors of electricity. As we saw in a previous video, these exist as discrete molecules with fixed numbers of atoms. The reason for their poor electrical conductivity is that they do not have delocalized electrons. The electrons in the molecules are localized in covalent bonds between the atoms. So next we look at giant covalent substances. Like molecular compounds, giant covalent substances are poor conductors of electricity. So here we have three examples, diamond, silicon, and silicon dioxide. These are poor conductors of electricity because they do not have delocalized electrons. The electrons in the structure are localized in covalent bonds between the atoms. However, one exception is graphite, which we'll look at next. So as mentioned in the previous slide, graphite is an exception because it has a giant covalent structure, however, it's a good electrical conductor. To explain why, we need to look at the structure. Graphite has a layered structure with layers of carbon atoms bonded by covalent bonds. The layers in graphite are held together by London dispersion forces. As we can see, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. This creates a spare electron for each carbon atom. These spare electrons are known as delocalized electrons, which are free to move within the structure. Therefore, graphite is a good conductor of electricity. So to summarize, graphite has a giant covalent structure with delocalized electrons that are free to move and conduct electricity. So having looked at the structure of graphite, it's important to note that molecules with delocalized electrons are not good conductors of electricity. So here we can see two examples of molecules that have delocalized electrons. They are benzene and fullerene C60. Even though these molecules have delocalized electrons, they are poor conductors of electricity. And the reason for this is that the delocalized electrons are only free to move within the molecule and not between molecules. Therefore, both these molecules are poor electrical conductors despite having delocalized electrons. Next we look at ionic compounds. Ionic compounds conduct electricity only when melted or dissolved in water. Here we can see the lattice structure of an ionic compound. When solid, the ions are held in fixed positions. Therefore, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity when solid. When melted or dissolved, the ions are free to move and can carry an electric current. So here we can see examples of free moving ions. The ions are free to move when the ionic compound is either melted or dissolved in water. On the right, we can see that ions are attracted to oppositely charged electrodes. This is one of the ways in which the current is conducted in an electrolytic cell. This will be covered in more detail in topic 9. Next, we'll look at metallic substances or metals, which are good electrical conductors. The metallic structure is made up of a lattice of positive metal ions in a sea of delocalized electrons. So the delocalized electrons within the metallic structure are free to move and conduct electricity. And this explains why metals are good electrical conductors. So let's end the video with a summary. In this table we have the type of bonding, the electrical conductivity and the reason. Starting with compounds with covalent bonds which are mostly poor electrical conductors. And the reason is that they don't have delocalized electrons. Next, we have compounds with ionic bonding. These conduct electricity only when melted or dissolved in water. And the reason is that the ions are free to move when melted or dissolved. And when solid, the ions cannot move. And finally, substances with metallic bonding. These have good electrical conductivity. And the reason is the presence of delocalized electrons within the metallic structure.